Parenting is challenging. The seasons just shift and change, and along with those new seasons come different types of challenges. One challenge that I hadn't expected and I still feel anxious about when I look back at it was my daughter Addison's journey to learn how to read. It has weighed very heavily on my heart, not because she's still struggling. She's not. In fact, she's a great reader now. But because I know so many children and parents in this country are having a similar experience and they aren't all ending up with this good outcome that we got. Today, I'm going to share our story and what I think every parent in this country should know about reading curriculums. Hi, I'm Allison Edgity, a pediatric sleep and wellness coach and a mom of two. I love to help parents find solutions. This is How Long Till Bedtime. When Mike and I decided to send Addison to our local public school, we felt really good about our decision. I won't go into all the reasons why we made that choice, but I remember thinking that, hey, if there's a problem with education the school is providing, I'm going to be able to quickly figure it out and we can always make a change. In hindsight, I was so naive. I am not an educator and this was my very first child. Was I really going to know if there was a problem with the education they were providing? Was I going to know if it was really working or not working for my child? Addison loved kindergarten. Mike and I were a little worried as the school year was coming to an end because she hadn't really started to learn to read. She had memorized a bunch of sight words, but seemed to really guess at very basic words rather than doing anything related to sounding them out. I knew some kids in kindergarten weren't reading well, and I knew some kids in kindergarten that were reading really well because I'm friends with the moms of some of the kids that were in her class. I also know that, you know, some kids learn at different times. I was a late reader, so I was trying to keep all of this in perspective, but I was starting to feel a little concerned. And apparently her teacher was a little perplexed by the whole thing as well, because I remember at our last conference, she said, Addison seems like a very, very bright child. I'm really not sure why she hasn't picked up on reading. I remember leaving that conference fairly annoyed because I was thinking, you're the one that's supposed to help me know why she hasn't picked up on reading. But then I decided to just check myself because it's just kindergarten, right? I did not want to be that crazy mom who expected my child to be doing everything perfectly and to be a total rock star in kindergarten. So my solution was to meet with the principal during summer break. I told her that I knew enough to know that it was pretty important that Addison make some significant progress with her reading in first grade. I asked her what we could do to ensure that she, quote, launched during her first grade year. She assured me that they would assign her to the very best first grade teacher, the one that was most experienced in teaching reading, and she assured me that would all come together. We went into first grade quite hopeful. Her progress, however, was slow. She was put in intervention, which we were totally fine with. I mean, that was one of the benefits of public school, and we were still hopeful that that was going to help. The teacher assured me that she was making progress, but at home, her frustration was growing, and we didn't really see this progress beyond books that she had memorized. Yes, it did kind of look like she could read on books that she had been read or had she had read multiple times. But anytime we introduced something new, she struggled. At our last teacher conference, just before schools closed because of COVID, the teacher told me that Addison was not alone. There were many students in that grade reading at the same level. 
so she did not think I needed to worry. I remember coming home and telling Mike that that answer did not reassure me. I wanted to trust the teacher, but how did we know there weren't just a bunch of kids that were being failed by the system? I felt lost and unsure of the next best step because Addison was getting very, very frustrated. And then schools closed. Eventually, some online learning started, and I got to watch a little bit. The approach to reading didn't make sense to me. There seemed to be a lot of guessing involved. And Addison's frustration for reading was growing. And anytime I tried to help, it only made it worse. By early June, I knew that she needed to be in person in second grade so that we could get to the bottom of this reading situation. So because of that, we decided to switch her to a private school. The reality is that I made this switch not because I knew the public school was getting it wrong. I thought Addison must have a learning issue, and I knew that I couldn't teach her to read at home, so I had to make a switch because of the pandemic. So she started at the private school in second grade, and within a few weeks, I received a call from her teacher. She basically wanted to make sure that I was aware that Addison couldn't read worth a lick. She said she was well over a grade level behind, and she was very concerned. She even pointed out that Addison didn't know the sounds of most of the letters, which I was aware of, and that was very concerning to her. She told me to give her a month to work with Addison to try to figure out the root of the issue, and then we would regroup on next steps. A month later, she reached out to me and assured me that everything was going to be okay, that they were going to get Addison on track, and no extra tutoring was going to be necessary. And lo and behold, each night as we helped Addison with her evening reading, we felt like we watched her launch. It was amazing. By mid-year, I would describe her as a reader. And by the end of the year, she had risen to the very top of her class in reading. So she went from being way below benchmark to, I think, the 96th percentile. I was thrilled. But I also knew this did not make sense. I understand that kids learn at different paces, But this improvement seemed way too rapid and too extreme for me. And as you know, if you've been around here, I'm a curious person. So I decided to go down a rabbit hole looking for answers. Her private school was very clear about the fact that their curriculum was focused on phonics. And that's what they needed to teach her to learn how to read. That's what they felt like she was missing. I knew from what I'd witnessed with the public school that phonics wasn't their focus. So what was the focus? It didn't take me too long to stumble upon a few articles about the cueing approach. As soon as I read about cueing, I knew exactly what the problem was with our public schools. They were using cueing to teach reading. I was so frustrated because it was so clear from what I read online that cueing is not supported by research and that this has been known for a long time. So I started to share Addison's story with my mom friends. I'm going to tell you guys, I didn't have one friend other than my teacher friends who had ever heard of the cueing approach or who knew anything, frankly, about the curriculum that their child's school was using for reading. Now, this is public and private. Just my friends didn't know. Like me, They were all trusting that their child's school was doing the right thing when it came to teaching reading. When I told them that I read an interview with a UVA education professor who said up to 75% of teachers in public schools are using a curriculum that incorporates the cueing approach and that the research very clearly tells us that this is not an effective way to teach reading, my mom friends were as surprised as I was. I asked a couple teachers from my daughter's first school to confirm they were using a curriculum that incorporated cueing. Once I received that confirmation, I asked, who decides on curriculums? This is how much I don't know about education. And I was told that this happens at the school board level. 
that meant that the whole county was using this queuing curriculum. I knew I wanted to address this with the school board, but I'm going to be honest, even after hours of research, I became very overwhelmed and I was really struggling on how best to articulate my argument. And so it kind of has stayed on my back burner of when I have time to sit down (laughs) and get to this, I'm going to come back to it. So what I've done in the meantime was to continue to talk to some moms that have talked to me about reading struggles, and I've helped people, whether they're in my county or not, be able to go back to their school system and to their teachers and their principals to find out how their children are learning to read. And some other parents, even not from my area, have found out that their children were also being taught the queuing system. So that's been my little tidbit of how I've been helping while still trying to get myself organized on next steps with the board. But then a few weeks ago, I stumbled upon a podcast on this very topic. It was a Sunday morning, and as soon as I found this podcast, I just devoured every episode. The podcast is called Sold a Story. I'm going to link to it in the show notes. This podcast is amazing because Emily Hanford, who's the person I had already found articles written by her uh, around queuing, so I was already familiar with her name. She does this podcast and she explains where did queuing come from? How did it end up in our schools? And why are so many ignoring the fact that the research tells us queuing is not an effective way to teach reading? As I listened to this podcast, there were moments where I literally wanted to cry because I realized that if I hadn't switched Addison to a different school, she would likely still be struggling. She would likely still hate reading. And she might generally just be struggling in all subjects because where do you go if you can't read? So this, I've realized, was my biggest COVID silver lining. The pandemic and schools closing prompted me to make a change that completely changed my daughter's academic experience. But I've also lost so much sleep over how many children are still struggling and how parents and even teachers have no idea why so many children can't read. Children in this country deserve so much better. Since Emily Hanford explains queuing so well in her podcast, Sold a Story, I'm not even going to try to explain it to you. And this is what prompted me to record this episode. I just want to share my story, and I want to encourage each of you to listen to this podcast. I truly believe that every school board member and every parent should hear it. After listening to the podcast, I decided this is it. I'm going to reach out to the school board and encourage them to listen to this podcast because she just puts it all together so beautifully. When I started searching to confirm the name of the curriculum our county is currently using, I stumbled upon some very promising news. I found an article that mentioned that our public school switched to a new curriculum after I pulled Addison out. And in reading this article, it sounded like it was phonics-based and that they were doing it because they were trying to align the curriculum with the research around reading. So this got me very excited. But I also connected with some teachers, and it was my understanding from some of the teachers that many teachers may still be incorporating cueing into their reading curriculum. So I sent an email to a board member, the one who I've watched many meetings with, and I thought, she's going to get answers for me because this is a sharp, sharp gal. I sent her an email to confirm that my reading online was correct, that we did in fact switch to this new curriculum that took us away from queuing and into phonics. And I'm thrilled to report that she assured me that that is the case, that we did switch from a queuing-based curriculum to a phonics-based curriculum, and the new curriculum should include no queuing. So while I'm thrilled to hear this news, I'm still waiting to hear back on how they're going to ensure that teachers understand the importance of dropping their queuing practices and how they're going to successfully shift all these teachers to this phonics-based curriculum. I know from being a manager that it can be very challenging to get people to change their ways. So I realize this won't happen overnight, and I know transitions take time, 
but I am still so thankful that our county made a change, and I'm very much looking forward to hearing how they're going to ensure that everyone gets shifted over. So why am I sharing our story, and why am I encouraging you all to listen to this podcast If in the coming years you will be choosing a school for your child, I suggest that you ask about the school's reading curriculum. If your child has struggled or is currently struggling, I would encourage you to ask about your child's school's current curriculum. If you learn that queuing is being used in your school district, I want to strongly encourage you to send your school board the Sold a Story podcast. Get loud and encourage other parents to get loud with you. To my fellow parents who have children who have or did struggle with reading, I hope, if nothing else, my podcast and the Sold a Story podcast will help you see that you're not alone. I am sending you so much love because I know what it feels like. I know that we are all doing the best we can with what we know and with our current circumstances. I just wish I had known about queuing sooner. And if this episode helps even just one parent learn what I wish I had known, I will be happy I recorded it. If you know a parent who has a child who's been struggling with reading, please share this info with them. Thanks for joining me this week. Next week, I'll be talking about naps, rest time, and when we should drop the nap. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to How Long Till Bedtime. To learn how we can work together to improve your child's sleep, please visit sleepandwellnesscoach.com.